Okay. So, in the last lecture we have seen the auto cycle and that was a representation of the petrol engine uh, which as I told you uh, the petrol is rapidly burning. So, we are we were adding the heat at a nearly constant volume it was instantaneous heat addition and of course, instantaneous heat rejection also uh, uh, in the auto cycle which we have seen. Okay. So, now today uh, let us let us try to see what is the abstraction or what is the model for a slow burning fuel. Uh, you have also seen large marine engines where heavy oil is burnt okay, that is a two stroke engine okay. So, uh, or it can also be a diesel engine for example, a diesel automobile which is also uh, 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 which uses diesel for example. Uh, both uh, heavy oil and diesel uh, are slow burning fuels, uh, heavy oil is still slower uh, burning the rate of reaction are still slower than a diesel engine. So, how do you represent uh, a real engine with a thermodynamic cycle which is an equivalent thermodynamic cycle or an abstraction or a model. Uh, let us try to understand that uh, in this lecture. So, again I have uh, again I have made four stages the four strokes for example, more or less and we will again assume as in the last lecture let us say air air is available in a diesel engine in any case uh, air is used okay. and you will see that the amount of air which is used in diesel engine is usually in access to the stoichiometry. Okay. What is what is stoichiometry? That is the theoretical amount of uh, let us say air which is required to completely burn a fuel. Okay. So, diesel engines are also typically called as excess air engines that means we always provide more air uh, 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 than what is required to completely burn or completely oxidize it. Okay. That is what is called as the stoichiometry of the fuel that means if you have a a given amount of fuel you will require a certain fixed quantity of air to completely oxidize it into let us say carbon dioxide if it is a pure hydrocarbon then the hydrocarbon will burn and you will get carbon dioxide and uh, and water. So, uh, from uh, from a typical uh, uh, stoichiometric reaction or from a typical oxidation reaction you can actually find out how much amount of air is required to burn that particular fuel. So, in a diesel engine we will tell you why in a later lecture, but we actually give excess air that means a lot of air is given beforehand. So, let us say air is available to us and in a diesel engine we only compress the air, uh, the diesel the, the, the diesel does not burn with a, uh, uh, with a spark plug. What we do? We essentially compress the air to such an extent that the temperature of the, the compressed air goes higher than the auto ignition temperature at which diesel catches fire. So, at that temperature if you inject diesel okay, the, the injection of course, if a finite quantity of diesel has to be injected inside the cylinder then it requires finite time. Then I have also told you that diesel is slow burning. So, that means when the diesel starts auto ignition it will slowly burn it will take much more longer time than petrol for example the injection also takes finite time. So, please remember uh, in, in, in your thermodynamics you were never bothered about the time scales, but now in a real time situation we will have to deal with the time scales of all these operations injection time scale, combustion time scale, initiation of combustion, then spread of the flame for example, how does the diesel catch fire because uh, mind you the piston is always going up and down. So, there is a certain speed at which the piston is going up and down and we, we have finite time to, to sort of do all these processes. We have to inject the fuel, we have to get, uh, get it started burning, the combustion should start and then we should get that enthalpy and depending on the rate of reaction of this fuel there is a certain finite time in which the enthalpy will come out and during that time the piston is continuously moving. So, please remember now we will have to deal with these time scale in a much more closer manner because otherwise the transport of all these activities, the transport of the fuel inside the combustion chamber, the, the, the burning of the fuel, the combustion process itself, the heat transfer processes all that is now going to affect the efficiency of the engine. So, we will discuss that in later lectures. For today's lecture again we will consider that air is being compressed and of course, the air had come in at a certain uh, at, at atmospheric pressure. So, this is one atmosphere again and the air was here at one atmospheric pressure and we are just ready to compress. So, the volume is here this is the V axis okay. and so you have position 1 and we are now the air is trapped inside both the valves are closed and we are ready for compression and as we have done before we will again do adiabatic compression. 
So, there is an insulation which is all around the cylinder and we will not allow any heat to go out of this particular whatever enthalpy is trapped inside will remain inside and we will compress the uh, let us say cylinder. Okay. And as we have done before the compression process will act and it will go up to the clearance volume that means we have reached the second part we have actually compressed. So, compression compression has occurred the pressure and the pressure the temperature has, has gone up the volume has been reduced to clearance volume. So, we have now the piston has actually come here. So, let us repeat this diagram on this. So, we have actually come to this position and at this point remember now that we are dealing we want to make a model for a diesel engine that means at this point there will be some spray that means diesel will actually come in in a real time situation. Okay. If you want to model this because it is a slow burning fuel the piston is already started the piston has come up in the petrol engine all the heat was suddenly coming in. So, we were actually going up from here that means the it was almost like a heat addition at constant volume, but in this case what will happen as the heat comes in the piston has already started moving back. That means all the heat has is not possible that all the heat can come instantaneously. So, essentially the piston has already started its backward journey and in that backward journey the heat is still coming uh, and to a certain extent the injection is also taking place because there is a finite amount of uh, uh, fuel which has to be injected inside the cylinder. So, the injection has also started some of the diesel has started burning at certain at, at uh, many many locations inside this there is nothing like a spark plug here uh, uh, wherever there is a favorable mixture okay, wherever there is a favorable condition the temperature is already high enough that this mixture can auto ignite and therefore, wherever there is a favorable condition combustion has started actually. And then there are multiple you can imagine that there are multiple spark plugs you know it is like a homogeneous combustion which is taking place inside this from at some certain location uh, let us say the fuel is coming is all already getting injected. So, what is actually happening is that as the heat is coming in the piston has actually started its backward journey already from this top dead center uh, you know it has already started going back and heat is still coming in. So, what essentially will happen is that this is more or less like as the pressure is increasing the heat is coming in the pressure wants to increase, but since this is a free piston that means this piston can is able to go back okay, it is actually pushing the piston back. So, it is the piston actually keeps adjusting to the increase in pressure here. So, that means as the pressure increases the piston goes backward again more combustion takes place more pressure tends to increase the piston is pushed back. So, essentially what is happening is that you are actually from this position rather than going like that as you went into the petrol engine you are actually you can model it as if you are going at constant pressure. So, the heat in this in this particular case the heat is actually being added at constant pressure it is so, so, so the diesel engine you can model it as if the heat comes in at a constant pressure rather than constant volume. So, one one uh, one uh, one limit of heat addition was instantaneous and this limit is such that the heat comes in and the piston keeps moving backwards to maintain the pressure inside because it cannot sustain a delta p uh, this is atmospheric pressure on the other side and as soon as the pressure rises here the piston goes back. So, you can actually model it as a heat addition. So, q is coming in at constant pressure. So, you see the pressure remains constant here okay. and then at a certain position up to a certain position of the piston let us say up to this point the heat the all the diesel has now burnt that means now whatever expansion whatever further expansion takes place okay, there is no heat addition anymore whatever heat was supposed to come in has already come in all the diesel has been injected and everything is burnt now. Okay. So, from this point onwards there is no added enthalpy uh, let us say uh, no added enthalpy going to the system. So, naturally if expansion is continuing then the pressure and the temperature will go down. So, from this point onwards 
okay you you can uh, the our insulation is still there intact okay so your heat heat came in as the heat came in the piston was going back, backwards the heat is coming slowly and it is allowing the piston to go back in fact the pressure is rising and the piston is going back and so uh, you you get nearly a constant pressure type of a condition you reach here the diesel has burnt and further expansion now is actually adiabatic so again this is pv to the power gamma is equal to constant okay so you have actually gone in the expansion stroke so let us make that again here so you have come from this position to this position and then from here you have a constant pressure heat addition then an adiabatic expansion okay so from 1 to 2 to 3 so this was work done on the system w in this was heat added to the system q in okay this was the work done by the system this is where the positive work is coming out and again when you will reach the last point here that is the the, the bdc or the bottom center okay uh, bottom dead center uh, you 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 are here and now you would like to remove this insulation you want to remove this insulation so the piston has already moved backwards it has come from this position to this position so you have actually come from 3 to 4 uh, okay so this is this is the position number 4 you have actually gone up to the bottom dead bottom dead center and at this position as i as i told you in the last lecture also you want to now complete the thermodynamic cycle so you would like to come from here to here so let us assume that there is a mechanism by which we can instantaneously take out the heat whichever is whatever heat is remaining at this position we would like to get rid of it so that the temperature and pressure uh, again comes back to the original so once you are here you actually again from 4 you can actually go back to 1 and this is the heat rejection so q dot is rejected okay so that is the 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 heat rejection and you have again reached the point from where so you have again reached position number 1 in this case again uh, you can now start start compressing okay and you can come back to this particular position so essentially uh, what we have seen is that this particular cycle is distinctly different than what the cycle you have studied in the last lecture this cycle is called as the diesel cycle okay so what is the main difference the main difference these two processes these two processes are still adiabatic this last process the heat a uh, rejection process is still exactly the same as it was in the auto cycle however there is a difference here and what is the difference the heat from 2 to 3 in a petrol engine or an auto cycle it was a constant volume heat addition and from there it was expanding but in this particular case in a diesel cycle since it is a slow burning cycle we can model it as a constant pressure heat addition process so everything else remains the same accepting the fact that this particular process of heat addition which takes place is distinctly different than the petrol engine and therefore this has a uh, distinct name which is the on the name of rudolf diesel of course uh, it's the diesel cycle so we will study uh, later on in the uh, in in the subsequent lectures how to compare these two cycles and how to analyze these two cycles mind you right now this is what is called as an air standard cycle that means we are Uh, we are not actually dealing with the actual injection process or actual carburetion process or actually fuel air mixing and all the transport limitations etc they are not being dealt with here we are only dealing with uh, air as the working medium and some way you are e able to give the heat and some way you are uh, 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 you are uh, uh, okay able to take out the heat okay so uh, with this abstraction we we will see that we can still analyze a real ic engine with reasonable accuracy but then of course for real time uh, engine we need more understanding and more analytical tools to understand the real cycle and in the subsequent lectures we will actually see how a petrol engine a real time petrol engine is differing from the auto cycle which you have studied and how the real time diesel cycle differs from this particular cycle the diesel cycle which you have studied right now